All right, um, so let's get going. Uh, I'm excited to talk with everybody today about how you can build a location-based game using the Mapbox Maps SDK uh, for Unity. My name is Miroslav Lysik. Uh, I'm the product manager on the Mapbox Unity team. I work with the Unity community and developers like you to understand how we can make easy to use tools to bring location into your games and various projects. Um, my background is in autonomous vehicle mapping, gaming, and helping people launch uh, the right types of businesses. So how many of you have used Mapbox before? All right, seeing some people. Um, so from a high level, Mapbox empowers developers to connect their projects to the real world. Um, prior to Mapbox, uh, there are very few and limited tools focused for developers to integrate customizable maps and location data into their projects. Um, we provide a series of APIs, uh, just like you have APIs for payments with Stripe, uh, APIs for communication with Twilio. Um, we provide location APIs for uh, web, mobile, and other platforms. And they generally consist of uh, several location building blocks. Um, the first is global, highly customizable maps. So uh, if you want to design a very particular type of map for your app or game, or you want to integrate your own data, or you want to make sure that the map reflects your particular brand, um, you could use our map APIs to do that. Um, we also have location search APIs. So if you want to see what's around a particular place in the world or search for a particular place, you can leverage our location search APIs. Um, and the third type of API we have is our navigation API. So you can route people from point A to point B using the API. Um, and it also includes telemetry data, which means that um, we have people movement patterns, including traffic, uh, for particular locations in the world that you could leverage for various different purposes in your apps. And the need is real, and it's growing. Uh, we've got over a million registered developers using us and over 300 million monthly active users through our partner apps. So uh, we help power things like the Snap Map, uh, Lonely Planet, the Weather Channel. And in part, you're seeing this growth because mapping and location data isn't just your traditional navigation experience. Um, location data is increasingly powerful in a lot of different contexts. And that includes Unity. Um, it's really, really exciting and interesting to see what happens when you take those three types of location APIs and data and you bring it into Unity. With our custom maps um, and uh, uh, data associated with particular locations, you instantly get global, customizable 3D cities and terrain um, in Unity. Uh, so you can start to create much more real levels for your players. You can start to simulate real cities. With our location data, once you bring that in into Unity, you suddenly have metadata that you can use for procedural generation. So not only do you have buildings that generate immediately within the editor, you also have associated metadata for those locations. So in this particular little video you're seeing, uh, we have Starbucks mapped out relative to buildings, and then we're just swapping out the prefab with that POI marker. And so that you can start to leverage that for both procedurally generating gameplay, gameplay experiences, um, and also things like styling, and maybe I want to style my buildings a certain way if it's a certain type of venue. And this is all possible with the location metadata that you get from our APIs. And both of those things are also ready for immersive world scale AR experiences. Because we have those buildings, those buildings are actually reflective of the real world buildings. And so when you take those buildings out of the Unity editor and you blow it up to world scale proportions, all of a sudden this virtual model of the world you have, you can overlay it with the real world. And so that is extremely powerful for starting to create immersive AR experiences for, for people. So here you're seeing uh, a navigation uh, a demo that we built out where you have the marker that's placed in a real exact place in the world. Once you approach it, it triggers it. Um, you start to overlay information around the world uh, uh, to use however you want. So 
when you bring those things together, you can suddenly bring the real world into games and games into the real world. Um, and I want to emphasize that last part. You can bring your games into the real world. Uh, so that starts with things like location-based mobile games. Um, you use the mapping layer and POI data to start to spawn, let's say, treasure chests in the world. Um, you can simulate real worlds. And this is relevant for anything from gaming to we see things in the automotive space. We see things in architecture, engineering. Um, you can instantly generate real worlds, swap buildings out, do whatever you want. Um, and then again, you could blow it up to world scale proportions. Um, and so this data is relevant for gaming. Um, easy to start with our SDK, and we'll show you this right now. Um, and it's ready to scale. So um, if you're a hobbyist and all of a sudden your game uh, becomes a hit, or you're a AAA game studio and you want to release a large scale game, we have the infrastructure to support you, uh, given that we uh, support other very large players in the world. Um, so this is kind of the, the, the building blocks, but let's actually get into building lo the location-based game and uh, see what this looks like in the Unity Editor. Um, so invite Abhishek here, uh, our tech lead, to take you through. Hi. Um, my, do I have the mic? Yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Abhishek Tripathi, and I'm the technical lead for the Unity team at Mapbox. So I have a background in GIS and uh, uh, gaming engine, so the Unity team at Mapbox is like the perfect place for me. Um, and I help build uh, the tools that you can use uh, to bring all the Mapbox data into your games and applications. So uh, let's dive right into the Unity editor and see how that goes. Uh, so at Mapbox, when we build our SDKs, we, we care a lot about how uh, you as developers are going to use it and how we can make it super easy and, and re reduce the time to get started um, building your applications, right? So we identified some common use cases for S our SDK which you can uh, take advantage of. So I want to show you how we provide them to you in, in our SDK. So we have we identified like location-based game is one of the most common uh, use cases. City Simulator is another. And we spoke about uh, AR. So AR has two different flavors, tabletop AR and world scale AR. So uh, with our SDK, you get these uh, four starting points, which you can use as like starting points for, your, for building your game. Or we also provide you some prefabs for the, the same use cases, which you can drag and drop into your game, uh, into your existing scene. So let's get started with the location-based game prefab, or the starting point, and see what comes right out of the box. So here, if you uh, look at the scene hierarchy, this is very similar to a default Unity scene uh, with the addition of our location-based game prefab. And, uh, what does the location-based game prefab contain? It contains three essential components for any location-based game. So we have the map component, uh, which is how you render the world in your, uh, in your game, a player target component, which is how you place the player in that world, and a location provider component, which uh, basically fetches, uh, say, location from a device, or if you're uh, mocking it up in the editor than some way of getting the GPS location, right? So let's let's press play and see what you get right out of the box. So you can see right out of the box, you get a map, you get a player, which is like a default player, uh, which is placed at a location, which is which is deriving from a, the location provider, right? So this is a good starting point. I have everything that I need to get started. But when you're building a game, you want to have uh, uh, the ability to customize it and make it look as uh, your game's art or like the look and feel of the game. So let's see uh, how you can customize this experience. So let's take a, a deeper look at the map component. So the map component comes with a well thought out uh, UI. And we've broken it down into multiple sections, so you can maneuver to whatever <coughs> uh, 
uh, customization you want to make. So suppose I don't want the default looking map. I want something darker, right? So I'm going to choose the data source to be Mapbox dark. So you can see there are some defaults that we provide uh, with Mapbox, right? So these are defaults coming straight away from Mapbox, but you are not uh, bound to just using those. You can create your own custom styles by using uh, the custom options and creating it, uh, it with Mapbox Studio. So you have full freedom there. So let me select dark here. How about we add some 3D buildings to uh, the map? So at Mapbox, we have something called tile services, uh, with, where we provide data uh, in the form of vector tiles. So that's basically geometry coming in with some metadata associated with it. So for example, if I wanted to add buildings uh, with using Mapbox vector, vector data, you get the geometry of the building and some metadata associated with that building, right? So uh, the height of the building, the what type of building is it? Is it a commercial building or a residential building? So I'm going to add one of those data sources. Again, uh, there are some default Mapbox data sources which you can use, or you, if you have some custom data from a city or you have your own points of interest or, or something like that, you can still create custom data sets on top of our uh, data using Mapbox Studio again. So I'm going to choose Mapbox Street. And under Features, I'm going to add a visualizer. And let's call it Buildings. So uh, here, I just want to go a little bit into the details. So I want to render my buildings as polygons, and my data is coming from a layer called buildings, right? And let's give the building some height, and like I spoke about some uh, the metadata associated with them, I'm going to use the extrusion type as property height, and there is a property called height which comes with the building, right? So I'm going to use that property. So each building is going to get extruded using the metadata uh, contained in the vector data. To style those buildings, I again have some defaults which you can choose from, or you can create a custom um, style or material, which is basically a Unity material. So one thing to note here is every feature that is created using our Mapbox SDK is a, is a game object, right? So it's a Unity game object, and you can attach scripts or uh, do anything that you would do with a regular Unity object. So, okay, now let's press play and see what changes have we made. So right away you can see I have a darker imagery and I have 3D buildings rendered beautifully in a realistic style. Okay, so that's cool. But not every time in your game you want to have like realistic looking buildings, uh, you want to like uh, uh, make your game have the art aspect that you thought about it, so you want to fully customize it. So let's, I want to open up a scene which I spent maybe 10 minutes uh, customizing, and I'm going to show you what is possible with our SDK. <clears throat> So one change you can, uh, that you can see right away is I've replaced the default player with a Mapbox astronaut uh, player. Uh, let's play. So you can see I've totally changed the look of the buildings, right? Uh, they, they look exactly as I want them to look in my game. And I want you to notice the green polygons being rendered. So they are actual real world parks. I want to show you something. So if I go under my map and features, I'm going to select my park layer. So you can see the layer name is called land use. So again, Mapbox provides you with data and metadata, right? So I'm using the land use layer and using the metadata to identify where my parks are and render them with green polygons, right? Uh, here I want to show you like I filtered only parks. So that's what I'm doing. And again, because everything is a Unity game object, you can attach scripts to it. 
We call them uh, modifiers in our SDK, and I've attached a script called spawn tree modifier. So inside of those green polygons that are real world parks, I'm spawning some prefabs which can represent my trees. Cool. How about, uh, so let's say my game encourages my astronaut to go uh, visit uh, some restaurants, right? and there's an incentive of going to a restaurant, how would I identify those restaurants uh, in my game and make sure my players go and visit them? So again, uh, because Mapbox provides you with a lot of metadata, you, we also provide you a layer called points of interest layer. So you can easily spawn things at, say, restaurants. So how would I do that? Let's, let's, let's see. So I'm going to go under points of interest. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to call it food. And so you can say I want the prefab location that I'm going to find by Mapbox category. And you can see a bunch of categories here, right? So I'm going to say none and just select food for now. And you can see there is a density slider. This helps you uh, select how many pre pre or like how many points of interest do you want like the density you can you can control the density so i'm going to still say it 15 and let's see what happens what's the attached game object for you? oh yeah i have to attach a game object for it sure okay that's my prefab So now you can see hot air balloons being spawned at actual restaurants in the world. Uh, this is great. Uh, now I'm pretty much ready to, s to start iterating on my game. How cool w will it be if I could just iterate just in the editor, right? And I don't have to build this on, on my phone and go out for a walk and find something and then again come back, iterate. So we heard. Uh, that concern and we give you some tools where you can go out with your phone or just record a, a GPS log and play it back in the editor. So I, I, did, a uh, I did a similar walk uh, before coming to Unite Berlin. Um, so I'm going to use, uh, show you how I'm going to make this astronaut walk on the same path that I walked in San Francisco. So I'm going to go into my location provider I'm going to change the location provider to something called a location log editor pro location provider. And let's see what that has. So it says I'm providing it a log file, which is me walking in SF. Um, and let's play. So that's, that's, that's exactly my path uh, that I walked on. So I. Uh, walked in, in, in a park and the astronauts walking. So this is really helpful when you want to iterate in the, in the editor. Okay, so your location-based game is pretty much ready to go. You can add some game mechanics and build it on a device, it's ready to go. But let's take it one step further, right? Location-based games are cool. Uh, how about we take it to world-scale AR? So let's, let's do that. I'm going to open up uh, a new scene, which is basically this scene setup. <coughs> so like I, like I mentioned earlier, we care a lot about how you use our SDK and how we can make it really easy for you to get started and start doing the work that you know best, right? And not worry about uh, setting up other stuff and all that. So let's set up the scene so it's ready for world scale AR. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my main camera because AR is going to take over the camera. I'm going to turn off the astronaut because you become the player in, in AR. And I'm going to drag and drop a prefab that comes with the SDK, which has everything uh, set up that you need for AR, right? So it has the AR root and AR camera. It has some debug uh, components, and it has something called a synchronization manager. So what are we synchronizing here? We are synchronizing the real world with the digital world, right? So in order for WorldScare to work, your digital world has to be aligned with the real world. So that's what the synchronization manager is doing. 
So let's con connect our map, which is our virtual world, with the real world. Uh, so I'm going to drag and drop the map component in my synchronization manager. There's one more thing that you need to do. Because when you render the world in, in Unity, you render it at some scale. But when you're doing world scale AR, you need to render the world at the world scale. And because it, the data that Mapbox provides is real world scale data, we can use it very easily in world scale AR. So I'm going to change my scale to world scale. And since we're doing this in the editor, I'm going to attach something called a camera movement mock-up script, which is going to mock up me walking in the real world. Uh, like, So I'm just going to follow my player. And let's see what happens. So this is the same location log replaying in world scale AR. So the buildings that you see are world scale heights. Um, you can see the hot air balloons being uh, spawned at the, the restaurants or the food places. Um, so this is one type of ex world scale experience that you can create. And I would like to hand it over to Miroslav to show you some other uh, world scale AR experiences that our users are built using our SDK. Thank you. Thanks, Abhishek. So what Abhishek was just showing was in the Unity Editor. And I just want to highlight the fact that if this was, that was outside of the Unity Editor, what you would be seeing would be either an AR device or your mobile handheld. And the world around where you're not seeing the skybox is actually the world around you. So those buildings that he had shown blown up to world scale, they can either be overlaid over the real world ones, or you can just not have them there. And you have those hot air balloons flying over the real places in the world. So that really shows that it's a short leap from location-based gaming to world scale AR gaming. Um, everything that we just showed are the building blocks. Um, and so. I want to walk through a couple of different examples of uh, things that have been built using our SDK and uh, in-world scale AR. Uh, Hot Stepper is an app in the App Store. Um, they have this hilarious character that, that guides you from point A to point B. Um, and they use sort of our full stack of APIs from maps to navigation API. But the most interesting thing is that um, this character, when it walks past places like barbershops, for example, his hair changes or his hat changes. And so all of a sudden, this character is aware of the world around you and is creating a much more delightful and engaging experience for your, for your, for your uh, users or your players. Um, so this is a, a really interesting use case for uh, POI information. Um, we're also really proud that they won a Webby Award in 2018. Um, this next example is a skeleton fighting game in a park. Um, and so just as Abhishek was showing you, he used the park layer that he filtered out. Um, you use that same method to spawn gameplay anywhere in the world where, you're, where there's a park. So this game starts when you enter a park. And you can, for example, as far as usability goes, start the AR experience when somebody enters a park. And these skeletons walk on the park pathways and are using the Unity nav mesh and won't fight you until you get close to them. Um, and this is scalable, right? So you don't have to go and mark every single park in the world for this to happen. All you do is you use that layer that Abhishek showed, and all of a sudden, anywhere in the world that's a park, this game starts. Um, so it's extremely powerful. Um, and when you start to think about world scale AR, you get occlusion. So just like Abhishek dropped those uh, hot air balloons um, at particular POIs, um, we have here an example of, hey, let's drop an astronaut at all of the Starbucks in the world. And then when you go into full immersive world scale AR, they're there. But that 3D building data actually provides occlusion. So that means that one object in front of you is blocking the other object behind it. So if you watch, you see that the astronaut's leg is being blocked and his shadow or her shadow is being projected on the wall behind. Um, and again, it's super powerful, especially when you start to think about immediate limitations around uh, how close you need to be something for AR to work properly. And this is going to be increasingly prolific and common, especially as uh, AR 
glasses enter consumer use more significantly, um, you're inevitably going to see games in that context. And those games are going to be immersive. And they will require location. Um, so this is an example of ODG using our SDK to power an, an AR-based navigation experience using wearables. Um, so everything that we just showed in the SDK is what you need to get to this. Um, so it's already possible. Um, and you can get started, uh, mapbox.com slash unity. Uh, we have a really generous free tier, so you can get going right away. Um, and we're really excited to see what you build. Uh, we'd love to talk with you, uh, see what you're interested in. Um, we love collaborating with really interesting uh, projects. Uh, so please reach out to me or Abhishek. Um, our info is up there. And we have a booth in the expo where you can play around with our SDK and uh, get a sense of what this feels like. Uh, so thank you. Um, we can answer some questions if people have uh, anything they're curious about. We've got some mics right here. Thank right you. On. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for the presentation. I would like to ask, what's the coverage? So you really like have information about the building heights and so on for the whole world, or? Yeah. Um, so global coverage uh, and uh, for things like you know 3D building generation, um, much more populated areas are going to have much more clear building coverage. Uh, but generally speaking, it's global coverage building data. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, we'll let you all go. And then if anybody has particular questions, uh, happy to answer them. Thank you all very much. Thank you.